Hey everybody, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com and I am in my like rock out attire here. <laughs> we put out a really funny picture on Instagram yesterday. Um, so to give some context, yesterday was Wednesday and um, we had a, a, a dress up day as we are starting to do now like once a month. We kind of dress up. Last month we did pajama day where we all came in in our pajamas. This month we also had Halloween and now we're, um, yesterday Drew had a really good idea to um, get the clothing this you know everybody's got like kind of one article of clothing that's in their closet that was you know something they bought for themselves or was a gift from somebody else that they never wear for one reason or another and they're they're kind of embarrassed to wear it or it just doesn't fit right or whatever the reason, um, but they still hang on to it and they move it and keep it in the back of their closet. Um, we all wore that article of clothing yesterday. So um, I was kind of joking around wearing my stuff and um, Sarah came by and was like, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. And cause I was like, I was playing and fling with my scarf and couldn't really help myself. And um, so she was like, we have to shoot a picture of this. Let me shoot a picture. And then I was out at a lunch meeting and she put together this awesome memory of now fake album cover that's a Parks and Rec reference there for you Duke Silver fans. Um, it was hilarious and I, I'm a big Parks and Rec fan so I thought it was awesome. But uh, to explain my garb, um, the Red Hot Chili Pepper shirt I love so that's not at all a thing. So I just, I felt in a rocker mood yesterday so I want to put on my Red Hot Chili Pepper shirt because that was my favorite band when I was in high school. I started playing bass guitar because of Flea. And um, you know the jacket is this bomber jacket. This jacket's probably like 60 years old, 50 or 60 years old. It, um, it was my uncle's jacket. He gave it to me. I actually I used to be more, you know, I, I never used to wear it because it used to be too small for me. But I actually hadn't worn it since I lost a lot of weight last year, and it, and it fits pretty good now. I don't know. It looks kind of cool, but it has like this kind of fuzzy collar thing, and it's kind of weird. But um, you know, it, it, it can be removed, so I can take that off. So I don't know. I might actually rock this jacket a little bit more. Um, and then this scarf. This is a Virginia Tech scarf that my aunt knitted for me. I actually really like it. I'm just not much of a scarf guy, so I never wear it, but I feel kind of guilty because I never wear it because it was a nice gift from my aunt. So that I, that's why I wore it yesterday. Ironically enough, yesterday I left. It was really cold here. We're in central Virginia and um, it's starting to get cold now, especially at night. And uh, ironically, I had forgotten the jacket and the scarf and left it here. And I was actually really kind of missing it. I wish I had worn it last night because it was pretty cold. Anyway, so that's why I'm wearing it. I'm not going to wear it the whole time because that's just kind of uh, warm and, you know. So give me one second to kind of settle in. Um, you know, I've had a busy week to kind of catch you up on what's been going on with me. Oh, got my mic cord there. Okay. What's been, uh, what's been going on with me is, oh gosh, a lot of things. So we launched our website on like 9.30 on Friday last week. It was kind of crazy. Um, we were thinking the website was going to be down for two or three hours and ended up having some all kinds of random issues that showed up like right at the last minute as things were coming back online. So it ended up being longer than we thought and you know we've had some bugs on the website and, and we've, Rachel and I personally have had tried to really be there and be present and kind of catch all of the uh, reports of different bugs and various things. So we've been on all the social media program platforms and everything um, and uh, we've gotten a tremendous response and we really really appreciate that. Um, it's been a little overwhelming just because it was like such a monumental effort. We've been working on the site for a year and a half. Rachel especially has given like everything she's had towards this site because keep in mind we've been building this site kind of secretly on top of everything else. You know we've hired like 11 people in the last year. We've grown tremendously. Um, we've grown about 60% in the last year. It's been it's been amazing, um, but it's been it's been a lot. We've been running like at capacity for a long time, and uh, so we finally launched the site, and then it's like bugs, bam, you know, just craziness. So you know, we, there's a lot of reports of, of things that are going on. I think we got a bug list of like 80 or 90 different bugs right now that we're working through with our developers. And uh, you know, websites are just really complicated. Like it's amazing the amount of code that goes into these things and just the unforeseen complications that can happen with all different browser versions and different devices. And so a lot of the issues that you're seeing kind of reported, a lot of them are very kind of specific to certain devices or browsers or you know, there's compatibility things. So what we're doing is we're funneling all of those things through an email website at gouletpens.com. So if you're having you know, bugs and stuff with our site that you want to report, um, email website at gouletpens.com. Rachel is helping to manning that email box right now and corresponding with people to see exactly what the issue is so we can compile it all, get the information to our developers and work through those things. It's, it's a lot of work, a tremendous effort that we're putting through right now. You know, 
Um, but that's that's what's going on um, on top of like we're in the middle of the you know, holiday seasons coming up here and we got all these new products that are launching. We were thinking at this point we would have already launched the site and had time to adjust so that when all these new products came in around this time that we would have, you know, some breathing room, but it's ended up all hitting at once. We're getting a new phone system installed and it's just all kinds of exciting craziness going on around here. Um, so thank you so much for being so understanding and accommodating right now. It's really crazy, but in an exciting kind of way, you know, um, we equate it to like, we've just had surgery, you know, like think of like a cosmetic surgery or something, you know, it's like you, have the surgery and as soon as you pull off the band-aids you're all swollen and sore and you don't necessarily look very pretty but eventually you're going to heal and you're going to work through some things and uh, the idea is you know it's better than it was before so i'm not real big on cosmetic surgery but you know that's that's the metaphor that we've come up with if i had more time to think of one maybe i'd come up with something better but um you know kind of on top of that um you know i'm not going to make too big a, of a, a big deal about this but it'll help to give some context around what's going on um alex who is our uh community manager helping to you know, see oversee all of our social media platforms and posting things on Instagram and Facebook and all that. Um, she actually had her last day on Friday last week. Um, it had been something we've been talking about for for months, um, and um, you know, it was a completely mutual, amicable thing. Um, she basically wanted to make a career change, so it ended up with the timing and the site and all that stuff. It ended up being, you know, kind of a, a mixed thing for us timing wise because. Yes, it's hard because we don't have anybody to kind of backfill in for her right now. So basically, Rachel and I have had to absorb all of the oversight of Instagram, um, Twitter, Facebook, you know, YouTube, the blog, um, you know, Reddit, Fountain Pen Network. Uh, you know, I'm probably leaving something out, but it's uh, we, we're on a lot of different platforms right now and with the website it was like phew, we're getting tons and tons of feedback we are spending as much time as we possibly can on these things we're trying to get some help kind of throughout the company but like our whole order processing system has changed with the new website and you know a, a lot of things have changed um, you know because there's some bugs you know that you're seeing on the site there's also some bugs kind of on our back end that we're having to do a lot of workarounds to continue to offer kind of that level of service we normally do so it's really just a lot of change for us everybody's being super super flexible around here, super accommodating. You guys as customers and fans and stuff are being super accommodating. We really appreciate that. You know, right now is like, the, I call it the worst it's going to be. We're gonna continue to get better, work out some things, but you know, uh, this is a big change. We tried to do it before the holiday season so that we weren't right in the middle of our busiest time of year while changing over this stuff. It ended up not working out that way and we couldn't really change that. So, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. So. Um, Maybe that helps to give you some context, just kind of like what we have going on right now. Um, you know, like for example, we had the contact form was um, kind of busted on our site when we launched, and we were getting, we were not receiving all of them through our email. Um, that what the information was being captured, and finally our developers were able to gather it up and you know do a workaround for us to be able to get that. But we ended up having something like 500 emails that had been sent um, between Friday when we launched and uh, yesterday around noon when we finally got that information and it's like oh my god like Rachel she almost cried when she got those because this was these were all customers that were you know having issues and we weren't able to get this information and then it was like to get all of that at once was just like oh my gosh how do we manage all this so like everybody's diving around trying to figure this stuff out and you know, I don't want you to think that like this, it, like we're mismanaging it or anything like that. This is honestly just like from talking to other people kind of in the industry, like my brother-in-law is a developer, has built lots of websites and stuff like that. This is like how it goes, you know, and maybe you out there in the kind of the tech sector will know, like it's not unusual for things to get delayed, to have tons of bugs, for things to just be crazy. I actually, you know, I'm a little more of an optimist. Granted, Rachel is like, you know, I level deep into it. So she's kind of having a harder time like seeing her way through all the bugs. She's tr trudging through it right now, trying to fix everything. Um, but I'm looking at it like, you know what? It could be worse. It really could be worse. So we are working through things as much as we possibly can. And I'll kind of move on because I know I want to answer some questions. You don't want to hear about the website all day long, but that is definitely like life consuming for us right now is all that stuff going on. Um, so on a definitely an upbeat kind of positive note, we hit our five year anniversary on Monday of this week on uh, November 17th. And that was a big, big deal. Because if you look at the statistics of businesses that succeed for five years, it's pretty 
unbelievably low. Um, you know, they say, I, I think I've read things about like, you know, nine out of 10 businesses fail in their first year. Of those that succeed, eight out of 10 of those fail by year five or are no longer in existence anyway. So it's about 2% of businesses that start end up being around still after five years. And then of those businesses, I think eight out of 10 fail by year 10. So we are still unproven in that respect. We will see if we get to year 10, but I'm thinking that we probably will, but you know, depending on how well we handle things now, that's gonna be part of what lays that groundwork, but lots of exciting prospects. We're still growing, still doing cool stuff. That's the whole reason why we're doing the website is that we, it's gonna be a new architecture that we can build upon. Right now it's kind of, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not, it, I equate it to like, you know, we're moving, right? And the place that we used to live was smaller and cozy because it was familiar and it had all our furniture and pictures on the wall. Now we've moved to a nicer place, but it's empty and we don't have all the furniture for it. And you know, we need to change some of the fixtures and stuff like that. So it's got a lot more potential. It's not quite as cozy as the old place used to be. That's actually not a bad analogy. I just thought of that on the fly. So that, that's, that's about how it is right now. So we're in a bigger, better place, better location, you know, nicer, nicer features, but it's just not homey yet because we haven't got in, settled in, furnished, unpacked all the boxes, that kind of thing. So that's what's going on with our new website. I also just, um, you know, two days ago, um, spoke at Randolph Macon to a marketing class there. I committed to this like several months ago and I had thought that maybe things would be settled down from the website. I didn't think it would be like within the week of launch. So it ended up being kind of crazy, but still I took all this energy that I have here and I spoke to, you know, a relatively small class of college students over at Randolph Macon. Randolph Macon's a private college right up the road here from where our office is. So, you know, we got a, a customer of ours, he was a professor there and he asked me to speak there and I just, you know, I thought it would be fun for me. I've never done like public speaking kind of in that setting. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so, it was just neat, you know, I won't talk about it too much, but I basically got to tell the story and talk about how, you know, how we do things from a marketing lens with Goulet. We don't do paid advertising, you know, everything we do is social media engagement, you know, product reviews, the videos like this. So I got to, to talk about that and it was pretty neat. It was very, the kids were very engaged. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, last thing I want to do before I get into the questions here is um, we got a bunch of new products that have been coming in. They've kind of been streaming in like crazy. It's been a little nuts. Um, we got some extra fine preppies that just came in. Um, we've been getting those on the website, and so they're there now. Um, their bodies have changed on those, so it's a kind of a different design. And the nib is now just a, a plain steel color. It's no longer colored nibs, but the feeds, I gotta sneeze again. <coughs> ah, thank you. Ah, for you podcast listeners, I hate, I hate to sneeze without giving you warning. Anyway. So um, the preppies, the, the nibs are now all just kind of a steel color. They're no longer colored depending on which one you're getting. But the feed is now colored to match the body of the pen. So that's kind of neat. Um, eventually, they're going to all be transitioning over to this new kind of body style, um, not just the extra fine ones. i got to sneeze again. Good golly. Give me a minute. Ah, it's going to go away. Nope. <laughs> I think this is the first podcast I've ever sneezed on, the first Q&A I've ever sneezed on. Sorry, goodness. So, um, where was I now? Preppies, yeah. So, extra fine preppies are in that new body style. The rest of them are going to transition. I have no idea how long it's going to take. I feel like I had to sneeze again. Jeez. Um, we also got in the Conklin Durographs. We got two out of the three colors. Still waiting on. <laughs> This is, this is funny now, I'm laughing at myself. Sorry, <laughs> so sorry for audio podcast listeners. Okay, so now I'm gonna be all sniffly and stuff. My eyes are watering. Okay, the Conklin Durographs got those in two of the three colors, still waiting on the green one. And now I'm repeating myself and I gotta sneeze again. Good night. Okay, so I'm not gonna do a video on the Conklin Durographs until I get those green ones in, probably in another few weeks. Here it comes. Ah, this is torture. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um, another thing we got in, we got in the uh, Field Notes Winter Edition. It's called Winter Ambition. A couple different rulings. Got a planner in there. A, 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 sorry, a ledger, um, you know, and a graph. And it's kind of neat. So um, check those out. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> okay. I got to put it in my mind vice here. Brian, stop sneezing. Okay. Also, the Apica Basic um, 6A10, if that means anything to you, um, that's coming back. We had a little communication issue with uh, Apica. They were back ordered on that notebook. 
And the word they used to communicate to us over email that it was backordered was they used the word discontinued, which for us means it's not coming back, it's gonna be gone. So we took it off the website and basically told everybody it was not available anymore. And then we started to see it cropping up on social media that you know they were back in stock or whatever, and we're like, what's going on? And then we, we probed them deeper and asked them, you know, there's a bit of a language barrier um, there with the English. So we asked them and it was like, oh, okay, it was never actually discontinued. It was just gone, you know, out of stock for a while. So it's it's back, even though it was never kind of technically gone, it was just out of stock for a while, but you know, now it's back. So you can get that again if you like those Apica basics. And then last thing is kind of my video schedule. I'm super behind on so many things because of everything I've been telling you for the first 15 minutes of this video. Um, but uh, I've got a lot of things I need to nibnook. I need to nibnook the Omaso Jivas. I need to nibnook the um, Extra Fine Preppy and the Conklins and the Delta Unicas that we just got in. So I know I'm super behind on all that stuff. And I am certainly becoming a bottleneck in many areas around here. And I appreciate your patience with all that. I really do. Um, but I do plan on doing a video on the Stipula Splash because it's been very requested. It's on my radar. I am going to try to do that as soon as I can in the next week. Hopefully, that is my goal. I also want to do a writing sample video of the Ojivas. I got a nimdok anyway, so while I have them inked up, might as well shoot a video on it. And that would be kind of cool, I think. Um, and then one on the Conklin Duragraph. Just because we've never done anything with Conklin, it's a new pen, it would be kind of cool. It's a great value pen. So that is my plan to start to pound some of that stuff out. I've also. Um, been working on. I think, I think I'm planning today, as of when I'm recording this, to post the Lamy gift set video. Um, we've also had like the Twisby red and green coming in, and just all kinds of stuff. Excuse me. So um, that's what's been going on. So sorry it took me so long to catch you up here. Um, now I'll actually get to your questions. So that said, now I am you know manning Facebook, um, pretty much uh, flying solo. Rachel's helping me out there. But now when you're seeing me posting on Facebook, on my personal and the company Twitter page. Most of that's me. Rachel is helping out where she can, but she's also working on the website. So I'm like, Rachel, stay off it. Let me take care of it. You know, let me help her out. So I'm I'm back on those channels now, um, pretty much solo. Um, I am going to be looking for somebody to help me out in that respect, uh, but I'm not ready yet. So um, that said. Uh, you know, I, I went through and picked some of my questions. I'm trying to answer now some of the questions that I'm not answering in the Q&A on Facebook and, and these other channels, so that you're you're not getting completely ignored. So I've got I picked out nine questions for today. I'm going to see how quickly I can answer them. But uh, judging from the fact that it's taken me now 17 minutes just to get through the intro part, it's not looking well. I'm finding that I'm talking a lot these days, a lot. Anyway, first question, uh, Shira on Facebook. What do you think are the reasons for a modern resurgence of the growing interest in fountain pens? And how can such a movement be sustained? This is probably a bad first question because I could go on about this for a long time. So I will try to keep it short. Um, it's no doubt in my mind that the modern resurgence, which I will call modern being the last 10 years, um, in the growing interest in fountain pens has to do with the internet. No question about it. Um, the internet has allowed all of us I'll call us weirdos. All of us weirdos who are into fountain pens, um, I'm using quotations there for you audio podcast folk. Um, the, the, all of us pen weirdos are all spread out. You know, people that we meet, that we work with, our family members, friends that we know, we're probably the only people that we know that actually use fountain pens on a regular basis. Um, unless somebody got us into it who we know or we are recruiting others into the fold. Um, you know, usually we kind of discover it on our own and then, you know, we're kind of left to our own devices. So what the internet has allowed us to do is all connect to each other through places like the Fountain Pen Network, um, Fountain Pen Geeks Forum and the Fountain Pen Geeks blog, my blog, you know, websites like mine, you know, um, YouTube channels, Stephen Brown, you know, all of us people who are out there who are pen fans, there's lots of great blogs out there, you know, Aziza and, um, you know, uh, all kinds of great ones that I could, I could uh, rattle off right now. Um, but, you know, it's, it has to do with us being able to all connect to each other and share this kind of passion, this hobby, this, this, um, our, our artwork, our writing, our, our product reviews, all that stuff. It all has to do with the internet connecting people. And I think that uh, one of the most things that's most interesting to me is that even though fountain pens effectively should have died off 60 years ago when the ballpoint pen started to really become popular, there's still, uh, you know, a, a fair enough following of fountain pen people that, you know, they're coming out with new products. There's companies that, you know, mainly thrive on the use of fountain pens. You know, companies like Noodlers and Lamy and, and other ones like that where fountain pens are the staple of their brand. 
you know, retailers like me who I pretty much do only fountain pens. You know, I rarely do anything else. I've got like a Twisby mechanical pencil. We'll have one roller ball coming out with a, the special, the special, you know, exclusive stainless steel Invincia in a couple of weeks. <clears throat> but other than that, I exist solely on fountain pens. So how is that possible? You know, it has to do purely through the sharing of information through the internet. And, um, the, the various tools that have cropped up with that. And I'm able to shoot a video like this and share it with you on YouTube and you can watch it for free in your underwear in your living room or you know maybe with clothes on, uh, ideally. <laughs> but uh, you know this is just uh, this is what this is what's doing it, I think. And you know you're asking how can the movement be sustained? Well, unless the internet goes away, I'm not super worried about it. Um, you know, personally, I view it as, I'm kind of an optimist, you know, and I, I think that it's going to continue be, because people like me and people like, you know, the other people out there who are very passionate about this stuff just want to share it with others because we have a platform, you know, a way to share our love, you know, with very, I call it a low barrier to entry. You know, pretty much anybody could shoot a video or shoot pictures, share on Instagram or Snapchat or Facebook or whatever their passion you know, it, it's gonna continue to grow, not, you know, leaps and bounds. You know, I know I'm not gonna become, you know, on the Forbes 100 list or something like that with a fountain pen, but I don't wanna be that, you know, and I don't think we need that to be that. Fountain pens don't need to take over the world. We just wanna continue to have our kind of, you know, niche little hobby that we love and do and share it with others. And honestly, I think that's kind of the goal. So I think it's gonna be sustained. I think it's gonna grow, I don't know how much, but I'm gonna do everything I can to try to grow it as much as I can because I think fountain pens are awesome and I want everybody who um, wants to get into them to be able to get into them. That's my mission. All right, Annalise A on Facebook said, any plans on making the wish list feature on the website shareable? Um, absolutely, it's not a feature that we have right now. In fact, we got a bunch of bugs with our wish list right now, more than I am really happy with, uh, kind of comfortable with, but we're working on that every day, trust me. Um, but uh, making the wish list shareable, that is definitely something that we were hoping to have launched for this holiday season. It looks like that is not going to be the case. It's probably gonna be you know, after the first of the year before we're gonna have that feature. We gotta pick and choose our battles at this point. We're trying to get you know, kind of the core functionality of the site, all, all get all the kinks worked out. You know, our developers, there's only so many of them, so we have to kind of prioritize things. So that would be classified as kind of a feature request, you know, something that we are looking to build and improve upon as opposed to a bug, something that's broken and needs to just get up to par. So right now we're working on bug fixes, you know, and then once we get to that point, okay, then we can work on the kind of the features and the neat stuff. So it's on the roadmap. It definitely is something that will happen at some point, um, just a matter of when, probably not for the next several months. Uh, Mikey M on Facebook, <laughs> why is the Goulet Pen Company so awesome? Thank you, Mikey, I will take that as a compliment. Um, you know, I'm not gonna tout myself way too much, but um, basically I'm, I'm humbled, I'm actually kind of humbled by that question um, because right now I don't feel like we're awesome. I feel like right now we're, we're trying to tread water with you know, big waves in the ocean that are crashing over our heads with this new website. But, you know, hopefully the, the message that's kind of coming out in all of this is Rachel and I and our whole team here, we care so deeply about what we're doing. We know this is such a huge transition for you. This is such a huge transition for us with the new site. I promise you that it is going to work for the better in the end, um, but it's going to take some time for that to happen. So, um, Right now, I'm not feeling like super braggy, super awesome, even though I have kind of like this total like mixed bag of emotions, you know, with the fifth anniversary and feeling really proud that I was kind of able to get to that point. And then like the website launch and all of the things that have been happening kind of on top of that, it's been kind of crazy. So, you know, we still have a lot of work to do and I know that and we're in it, man. We're in the thick of it right now, we really are. But I think looking at our company's values, you know, the, the thing is like we are being battle tested right now. And this, this week especially, 
I've seen the members of my team step up in so many ways that I could not have fabricated on my own. You know, it's like, this is not a drill right now. Like we are, we are in the midst of battle right now to get this website back up to the standard that you expect it to be based on our reputation. And we are not able to get it up to speed immediately, but we are trying to make up for that with awesome service by being present on all of our channels, by keeping the good kind of regular content, the same feel going on. You know, I'm slacking a little bit, I'm slacking. I'm struggling a little bit to do the nib nook and some of the videos and stuff that I normally would be doing with new product releases like this. Part of it's there's been so many that have come in. Part of it's the website and just lack of time. You know, Rachel and I are working until like one, two o'clock every night, getting five hours of sleep. It's it's crazy, you know, and I know that's not sustainable long term and the, the whole life balance thing, like don't give me a lecture, trust me, I know. But it's just like that's what's needed right now, this week you know, maybe next week and we'll, we, will, we will push through it as hard as we have to to keep kind of that conversation going, to keep that reputation up. Because we, the bottom line is, why is our company so awesome? Because we care and care is our seventh company value with a period after it because we just flat out freaking care about your experience, about this company, about fountain pens, about our team, about our vendors, about the manufacturers, about everything. We care about it all, we just care. Because we care so deeply, we're gonna do everything we can to do the best job that we can in all these different aspects. So that's it, we just care. Not to say that other people don't, but I would be, I would be hard pressed to find anybody that cares more than we do. Maybe as much, but not more because we freaking care. All right, <clears throat> Ben C on Facebook. Hey Brian, first thanks for tips on starting a business. I'm reading the E-Myth Revisited and find it very insightful. That's cool and you got more of a question but I want to touch on that. E-Myth is one of, one, of the, one of the better books I've read. Um, I definitely recommend that one to anybody who's interested in any business aspect, who's started a business or thinking about it, thinking about freelancing, whatever. Read that book, it's really good. Um, you know, especially kind of the key concept out of that book has to do with basically how everybody has kind of three personalities who's, who wants to start a business. You have an entrepreneur, a manager, and a technician. And what usually happens is your technician, you know, your actually the ability to do the work, do the job, makes you want to start a business because you don't want to be managed. Um, and so you end up starting your own thing. And what happens is eventually you fail to either cultivate kind of that entrepreneurial spirit or really the managerial kind of structural aspect of your, your business. And you end up kind of fighting yourself. Um, and he talks about that a lot in the book. And uh, that's something I've had to overcome. I am, I'm a very strong technician. I'm a very strong entrepreneur. The managerial thing is a huge gaping hole for me. And I've spent the last several years working on that. And now I'm trying to build up other leaders within my company, you know, Drew and Adam and Sam and some of the other folks that I'm trying to build up within my company to compensate for my weakness, you know, my logistical weaknesses, my scheduling, my, you know, that kind of stuff. That is a weakness of mine and I'm working on that, but really good book. So anyway, um, your question. Uh, I want to get my doctoral advisor a gift for helping me earn my degree. He really likes the weight, excuse me, of my platinum preppy, but I wanted to get something with a more executive look. Any suggestions? Thanks again. Um, well, the preppy is definitely like a, you know, it's a $4 pen, so I don't know if it's like a, thank you for being, helping me get my doctorate kind of thing. I don't know if that's like quite powerful enough, but you know, if he really likes that pen, um, you know, definitely get him that pen. Um, however, some ones that are kind of, uh, you know, right around kind of that weight, um, one really cool thing on our new site that we have now is a faceted search. So what I did actually was, I was like thinking through like what pens weigh about that. And I was like trying to think through like the pens that look differently, but I was like, oh wait, our new site can do that now. So I went on there and I just picked like the two chunks of like zero to nine gram, which I think there was only one pen, and then like, you know, the, the 10 to 19 gram. And I was looking at pens kind of in that weight range. Preppy's in there, and so I was looking, kind of scrolling through those, and that was actually super convenient. Um, so uh, what I kind of came up with, um, the Pilot Prera has got kind of that demonstrator look, kind of light, similar kind of thing. Um, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna write really nicely. Significantly more expensive than the Preppy, but it would be an option for you. Um, Schaefer's got some options, like the Schaefer Cigaris, perhaps. Um, the Platinum Cool, or Platinum Balance, that actually might kind of fit in there. That definitely looks a little classier. Still gonna be kind of a light pen. Um, and then if you really want to go and go nuts, 
um, price wise, you could get up into the Edison's, you know, like the Edison Beaumont, maybe um, Premier. Those are on the lighter end, not as light as a preppy, but on the lighter end, but definitely look much more regal um, than a platinum preppy would. So, you know, some options for you there. Um, Matthew B on Facebook, what do you think about the possible increase of flexible nibs in the fountain pen market? Noodler seems to have started a revival, and now it seems Stipula and Walt Eversharp and others are marketing nibs with some flex. Do you think this will be a growing trend? Well, by golly, it will be if I have anything to do with it. I mean, <laughs> I love flex pens. I think they're exciting. They are definitely a little more work. They're something that um, is hard kind of as an introductory pen into fountain pens. Because just the whole concept of a fountain pen refilling ink, you know, that kind of thing, just that is enough of a change for most people coming from ballpoints and rollerballs. Um, you know, not to mention the, the whole element of the flex um, and writing pressure and stroke, you know, and all that kind of stuff. That, that's really diving in the deep end for most people just starting out in fountain pens. And that's been one challenge. That's been one reason I think that Noodlers in particular has taken so much heat for their pens is because the price of the Noodlers pens is so low and accessible for people just getting into the hobby or recently kind of expanding their, their you know, in the early stages of their pen usage. But um, the, the kind of um, skill and patience and whatnot required to really utilize the flex pens well um, is, is more advanced than what most people getting into the fountain pen hobby for the first time um, would, should be expected to have. So a lot of people complain about the Noodler's flex pens. Some is justifiable at times. Some is a matter of expectation and practice and things like that. That's, that's more often the case. So in a way, it's been really, really good because it's gotten so many flex pens into people's hands. In another way, it can kind of give a false impression of fountain pens if that's somebody's first intro. They think that fountain pens in general are more complicated than they, than they should be um, because they're really diving into that deep end of the pool when they could be stepping into it with something you know that's a little easier to get into. Um, so that said, talking about kind of the increase in fountain pens, flex pens in general, um, it's actually no accident that it has happened that way. I remember talking to Nathan when he first came out with these pens. I was like, Nathan, these pens are like, you know, when he came out with the original Nib Creeper, it was $14 which was insane because the only other flex pen, the only other modern flex pen four years ago that I was aware of that was anywhere near affordable was the, the, the Minky Falcon, which is now the Pilot Falcon. And that pen was $140. And so it was like, go from $140 to $14. People were going nuts. And there was a huge availability issue. You know, for those of you that have been in the hobby for a few years, you remember the early days of the Noodler's Flex Pens, it was like this most recent Neponset release. The pen would come out, boom, sell out everywhere immediately, and it wouldn't be available for months. You never knew when they were coming back, and it was frustrating, and everybody wanted them, and people that got them got their hopes up really high, and some people complained because they didn't live up to the hype, and you know, all this stuff, all this excitement and craziness that goes on. I've seen this happen with the, the Nib Creepers. I saw it happen with the Ahabs when they came out. I saw it happen with the Conrads. I saw it happen with the Acrylic Conrads when they came out. I saw it happen with the Ebonite Conrads, and now it's happening again with the Neponsets. So it's, um, it's, it's just, it's, it's crazy to see. So, um, you know, what, uh, where was I going with all that? Um, yeah, so when the, when the original Nib Creeper Flexes first started to come out, I was talking with Nathan on the phone. I was like, Nathan, man, I was like, everybody wants these pens. They're having to wait for months. People are going crazy. Like, these pens are so inexpensive. Can you charge more so that, you know, the demand is lessened? I mean, that's not that I'm trying to like, you know, rake anybody over the coals or anything, but that is a natural kind of, you know, uh, business practice. You know, when there's a huge demand for something, you can't meet the demand, you raise the price so that people can kind of decide whether or not it's worth it to them. Nathan does not want to do that. You know, he's like on a mission with these pens. I really don't think, I don't really know his cost structure, but being in the business, I really don't think that he makes probably anything on these pens. If he does, it's minimal. Um, and I've talked to him about that. He's not trying to grow his business large. He's one guy that coordinates all this stuff, you know? And I, I honestly believe that he is on a mission to kind of change the mindset of the fountain pen industry in general. Um, I think that he has set out to do exactly what you asked about here, Matthew, which is a neat observation, um, which is to kind of prove that people want to use flex pens, you know, and people want to, you know, kind of use these fountain pens and have ebonite feeds and things like this and, and have ebonite pens. 
he's trying to prove that like, yeah, this, this kind of thing is not some vintage thing that needs to die off. So he's been trying to get these pens in people's hands and spur the demand for it, prove that there is a demand. That way other manufacturers will come along and say, okay, you know what, we can come out with a flex nib too. Now, no one is gonna come out I can tell you right now, no one is going to come out with a flex pen in the cost structure that Nathan has because his overhead is incredibly low and he consciously basically does, does you know, what I believe does not make hardly anything on these pens because he's, he's driven by ideology. He wants to um, get these pens out there. He's truly like a pen man for the people. So, you know, we all, whether you like him or not, we all owe Nathan Tardif a debt of gratitude for doing what he does because he really is kind of doing it out of the goodness of his heart and what he believes to be the right thing for kind of the fountain pen industry. Now, a lot of people don't like his politically charged stuff. I totally get that. I'm not saying that you have to like him as a person, but I think we all, you know, owe him at least a nod, a tip of the hat, thank you for what he's been doing with these flex pens and seeing other manufacturers now coming out with it. You know, Pilot with their custom 912, they're going to be bringing in the FA nib, which is a flexible nib. They're, you know, they, they came out with the Namiki, the Pilot Falcon, in a soft, extra fine. You know, these things. These things are not accidents, you know. These are things that have happened over time as I, as a retailer, um, for one example, I, as a retailer, have been selling Noodler's Flex Pens, proving, advocating for them to my other manufacturers and people that I represent, saying, hey, look, there is demand for these things. If you bring in the Pilot Custom 912 in this FA nib, I'm willing to bet there will be demand for it because people will want that flex. Now that pen is going to be significantly more expensive, so the demand will not be nearly the same as a Noodler's pen. However, the concept is being proven and that makes it a lot less scary, less risky for these large manufacturers to come out with pens like flex pens. Aaron D on Facebook. You asked a while ago what we thought if you started carrying more Waterman pens. Are you still looking into carrying Waterman? Um, I am definitely still open to it. I've got a Waterman Kareen that I've been carrying around, um, and uh, I, I like it. I like it a lot. It doesn't post that well. That's kind of my one complaint about that pen. Um, but I do really like that pen. Um, so the thing is that uh, basically um, we're carrying so much new stuff right now, and there's so much going on. I'm not taking on anything new that I don't have. I mean, obviously, I don't have to do anything, but um, I'm not taking on anything new unless I know that it would be like, I, I would be like, you know, tarred and feathered for not carrying it. Like the extra fine preppies. Like, how do I not carry the extra fine preppies? You know, seriously. Conklin Duragraph, like, for, you know, $45 pet, you know, like, how do I not carry that? Um, you know, the, the, Pilot Falcon is coming out in a red resin. You know how many, the Custom 912 with these these you know music nib and stub and flex. Like how am I gonna, not gonna carry these? You know what I mean? So like there's pens like this where it's basically like how can I not carry it? Those are the those are the pens that I'm carrying right now. And even still, there's so many of them. You know there's like a dozen pen models that we're coming out with within a month. It's it's just crazy right now. You know, um, and so just that alone has kept us super super busy. Um, so I am definitely open to Waterman. I'd love to know. Like I really need. Need, at this point, I need you to be like knocking down my doors for me to carry um, these pens that um, you know are kind of just around and I haven't really had them on my radar yet. Pens like the Waterman ones. You know, if you really want them, I need to know why and I need to hear it from a bunch of people. So hearing about it on social, you know, in, in the YouTube comments, on the blog, emails, my customer service team, customer care. Um, I need to be getting that kind of feedback to help to like motivate me and spur me on to take on yet yet more lines um, when there's already so much going on. So that's where I'm gonna I'm gonna put the ball in your court, Aaron. I'm gonna say that you need to make me wanna carry these pens. Sorry, that sounds super arrogant. That's not what I'm trying to say. But basically with as much going on as I have, I have to be selective about what I take on. Um, you know, so that that's where Waterman would fall. I'm definitely open to it. Probably is not something I'm gonna do for the next three months just because there's so much other stuff going on. Uh, Pamela H on Facebook, why aren't there any orange permanent inks? Great question. Why aren't there? Is it chemically impossible? I'd love a waterproof orange ink. Um, okay, you're right. You're absolutely right. There is a major shortage and honestly, I can't remember ever really getting asked about that a lot before. It's like I get asked a lot about waterproof reds. That I get asked about a lot more. 
Um, and there's a couple, not many though. Um, but the oranges, there's even fewer. There's only two that I know of right now. And that's Noodler's Operation Overlord Orange, which does kind of feather a little bit, and it's kind of got a bit of a spread, and it does not shade very well. It's kind of a, it's not my favorite orange. It's, it's not my favorite ink, really. In fact, it's one of my least favorite. I'm kind of ho-hum about that. But it does have some water resistant properties to it. That's one option. The only other one that I know of is Noodler's Dragon Cat Orange, which is a highlighter ink. Not necessarily the best for use in your pen, but it's it's permanent. So that, you know, it's a bulletproof orange and that's that's it. That's all I know of. I don't have anything else that's even remotely waterproof. So um, it probably has something to do with the dyes, with the chemical structure of these orange inks. Um, I have no idea. I'm not a chemist, but that is kind of my my observation from I've talked to, to ink makers a lot before about red inks and some other colors where you don't tend to see a lot of permanence. Um, green is another one where there's not a lot of permanent ones. Um, and, um, you know, I, from what I understand, it's, it's really just a limitation of the dyes, you know, of the, the chemicals that are used to make these particular colors. I imagine orange would fall in that same category. Just a guess. All right. Um, Gordon from Facebook asks, uh, will you be doing a Conklin review soon now that you carry them? What is the ETA for the Duragraph? Um, so I actually kind of covered this a little bit in my intro, um, unless you skip that, which I would totally understand because it was super long. Um, so basically, yeah, I'm planning on doing a review of the Conklin Duragraph. Um, it's a new pen. I only got two out of the three colors though. And so it's like, okay, I could do a video on it now, in which case for like the next five years or whatever that this video is still relevant, I would not have one of the colors in the video. And it's like, that's super annoying to me. So I'm gonna wait until I get that green color in. That's actually kind of the one I'm most excited about anyway. Though the orange one is pretty sweet. Um, so uh, I'm gonna wait till I get that one in. It's probably gonna be another two or three weeks before I do, you know, and that kind of stinks. But I do plan on reviewing that one. Um, as far as the nibs go, the nibs should be fairly similar to um, like Monteverde nibs. Um, so um, they're available in a fine, medium, and stub. Uh, no broads on these ones. Uh, no extra fine. So that's kind of how it goes. Um, so I do plan on nib nooking that one at least, but I'm not going to have a video on that pen for several weeks, and I'm sorry about that. Um, you know, um, but uh, I've actually got it selling right now um, as of when this video is posted. So it took me a little bit to get them up. Um, we'd actually gotten them in last week, but with the website launch and everything, I was like, let's not launch anything new until the new site is up because we would have had to create the product on both sites and then launch it and then convert everything over and the product structure was going to change like on the old site we would have had every pen as its own separate product based on nib size and then it would have all rolled up on the new site and so it's like you know what let's just wait things will be cleaner if we can come out with it with the new site now of course we're working through bugs and we're you know really busy with all that other stuff but uh, i'm kind of glad we went that route so i'm sorry if it's been a little confusing but that's why we've done things um, the way it is. All right, last question from Vincent T on uh, Facebook. Uh, kind of a specific question, but I recently got a Midori Traveler's Notebook, and the leather seems to feel a bit, a little more plasticky than anticipated. Is it normal for the leather to have very fine dimples on it, and will it loosen up with time? Um, yes, so it is a natural leather product. Um, it is, uh, you know, they tell me it's vegetable tanned, um, which gives it kind of that plasticky feel a little bit to it, got kind of shiny plasticky feel. There's lots of different types of leather. There's lots of different ways that you can tan leather. They give different kind of feels to it. Um, but one of the things is with this kind of um, oil tan is that it does take a little bit of time for it to kind of break in. It have, feels a little slick. It will happen over time. I've got my um, traveler's notebook here over in my laptop bag. Uh, uh, bear with me, I know I'm out of frame. Where is it? Here we go. So um, mine, over time, it does still have a little bit of a shine to it. I've been carrying it around for, gosh, close to two years now. Um, so it's still got a little bit of a shine to it, um, but uh, it's, uh, it's got you know some little scratches and stuff. I like it, it gives it some character. Um, but uh, it's definitely very supple now. Like it, it does, it, after a month or two, it'll start to break up and not break up. It'll start to break in that's the word I was looking for, and be more supple. So it's not always gonna feel kind of that stiff and whatnot. It's leather, it takes time to break in, just like all uh, leather products do. Um, you're asking, is it normal for it to have fine dimples on it? I'm not exactly sure what you mean by dimples necessarily, um, but if you're talking like like um, little like scratches and kind of pits and stuff like that, um, it's, 
I guess I would have to see a picture or something to really know. I don't know exactly what you mean by that, but um, you know, it is a natural material. I think they try to choose it to, to look perfect, but there's going to be some imperfections uh, here and there. Um, that's, I guess I'm going to have to give a super general statement like that. So, um, you know, it shouldn't be like covered and stuff, but if it's got a little ding here and there, um, that's not super, super unusual. Okay. Um, the question of the week for this week, this is all I'm going to get to for right now. Um, the question of the week for this week, um, I want you to tell me, um, kind of, you know, I hit my fifth anniversary with the company here this week. I would like you to tell me about a recent major milestone that you've hit in your life. Could be work, could be personal, whatever you'd like to share. Something where five years or longer, could be an anniversary, could be, uh, you know, you have your own business that you've had for a while. It could be, you know, I've been using fountain pens for five years and this is where I'm at. I would just love to know kind of a little bit your story of some major milestone that you're really proud of that you've hit. Um, you know, you can do a humble brag on yourself a little bit. You know, I'm just, I'm feeling in a very kind of like a milestone-y kind of mode, um, if that's a thing, I don't know. But uh, I'm curious to know. So post in the comments on YouTube, you know, I'll, maybe I'll ask the question on Facebook too, what the heck. Um, but uh, you know, post on the blog, whatever you want to do. Um, I'd, be, I'd be very curious to know. I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, so for next week, next week is going to be Thanksgiving. Um, so normally I would shoot my Q&A videos on Thursday and then I'll publish them on Friday. Um, we're closed actually here at Goulet for Thursday and Friday. We give our team off for two days for Thanksgiving because, you know, we try to, we try to do stuff like that. And, you know, we used to only give Thanksgiving Day and we would end up having half the team that would take off on the day after Thanksgiving anyway. Um, Rachel and I always have something going on with our family that day, so we would never want to work. So it was kind of like, you know what, we're, we're an online store. We don't have to do a door buster Black Friday kind of deal. So you know what, even though we're a retail company, we're going to close down two days at Thanksgiving. Give our team some time off. They work really hard. We want to give them time off to be with their families. We're a family company. We feel pretty strongly about doing that kind of thing. It makes it a little nuts when we come back after Thanksgiving on Cyber Monday and we'll have ink drop too and that's going to be nuts. But you know, honestly, it's, it's, um, it's the kind of thing that, uh, that's just how we choose to do it. So um, because of that, I will not be shooting Q&A on Thursday and publishing it, I'll basically have to do it like from home or whatever, um, which is fine. But the thing is, um, you know, it's gonna be a three day week for us next week, which is pretty compressed. Um, and I, what I, I don't wanna give up on Q&A at this point. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang out a little disclaimer there that I may end up canceling Q&A next week. But as of right now, I'm gonna still plan on doing it. So I'm probably gonna post the questions, um, you know, for it and, and look to get questions compiled Monday. That way I can gather them all up and answer them on Tuesday morning, which is when I'm gonna have to shoot. Because we do a company meeting on Wednesday morning and my schedule is compressed from the rest of the week. I'm stacked with meetings and all kinds of craziness. So I'm gonna have to shoot it on Tuesday morning so that I can publish it on Friday. That's the plan. So if I'm not able to pull it off for some reason, I'll let you know through our various channels that you know we're gonna be taking it off. But um, that's gonna be the plan for right now. So I'll do a you know Black Friday edition, whatever Q and A. I won't do anything that special. Maybe I'll wear all black. Um, shoot, I'm wearing black today though. Could have saved this till next week. I don't know. Maybe I'll wear it again. I'm not afraid to wear the same shirt in a Q and A. Anyway. <laughs> all right. So. Um, that's the plan. So, you know, you can, you can post a comment, you can email GoulayQA at GoulayPens.com. You can tweet me, hit me up on Twitter, on any of the channels, but if you hashtag GoulayQA, I'm much more likely to see it and gather it up. Um, I'm going to post a question on Facebook on Monday, and then um, if you answer on the blog or in the YouTube comments, I will try to soak it up and possibly answer your question if I'm able to. So that is the deal with Q&A next week. I hope you have a fantastic rest of this week. Again, hit me up in the comments with your uh, question of the week. Um, and I just hope you have a wonderful weekend, you know, honestly. I just, uh, you know, I know it's been a little crazy with the site changeover and all this stuff, but I um, appreciate you hanging in there with me. I promise we're still the same great company and we're doing this for long-term betterment of everybody's experience. And I appreciate you hanging in there with me. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for listening to another Q&A and right on.